Hey everyone, Sam here. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint an autumn themed landscape and I'll give you some tips on mixing some of those autumn colours. Now, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Now, before we start, I'd just like to quickly tell you about Portfolio Box and then we'll get straight into the video. So if you're an artist or a creative and you want to make your own website, then check out PortfolioBox.net. It's an online website builder where you can create your own beautiful website to showcase your work to the highest standard. It's really easy to use. There's loads of styles and templates for you to choose from. You don't need to know any coding as the whole thing works through drag and drop. And you can start building your website right away and then when you want it to go live, you just choose the plan that you wish to purchase. And right now, Portfolio Box are offering a 50% discount on any of their plans for the first year by typing in the discount code SAMERP50. And I've put the discount code and the link in the description box below. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. Get your paintbrushes ready and let's roll the tape. So just like my previous video on painting autumn trees, this painting is inspired by a place called Arrowtown in southern New Zealand. And this was some reference photos I took a couple of years ago. Now I'm painting on an 8x10 linen panel and this is linen that's glued to Baltic birch and they're made by a company called canvaspanels.com in the USA. Now I'm really loving painting these small 8x10 paintings at the moment. It's just a real good way to experiment with some small artworks, trying out some colour mixing and composition, and I'll be using some of these for some larger studio paintings. This canvas panel has a thin wash of burnt sienna which I applied to it earlier. I allowed it to completely dry though before I even begun my painting. I'm using a number one round brush and I'm using burnt sienna that's mixed with liquid original to sketch out the composition. Now I'm using oil paint here, so the liquid original is a medium that I'm using that when I mix it in, it not only thins the paint, but it speeds up the drying time. So this is great if you wanna get some paintings done quickly. So as I sketch out my composition, I'll just quickly go over the colors that I'm using, which include titanium white, burnt sienna, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow, quinacridone crimson, ultramarine blue, and cobalt teal. I'm using a fairly limited palette here, but this is good to help you with your color mixing anyway, and it also helps to make your paintings more harmonious as you're much more likely to use common colors throughout the painting. Now the brushes I'm using are mainly a mix of number five and number two flat brushes, number three filbert brushes, and number one and zero round brushes. The composition's fairly simple here and I'm using an S composition where I'm using this stream in the foreground which leads the eye towards the two poplar trees and the hill in the distance. Now the composition is actually not too dissimilar to the photos that I use, so I didn't need to change too much. When it comes to composition, just remember you're creating a painting and not a photo, so don't be afraid to move things around in the landscape if it's going to make a good composition. It's quite rare that you'll find the perfect composition in nature anyway. So as I begin my painting, I always look to establish the dark values first, and you've probably heard me say this on quite a few of my other videos now, but this is the process that works for me, and this is something I learned when I was painting outdoors, mainly because the light moves so quickly and often the weather conditions, so it's good to establish your shadows first, because then it doesn't matter if the light changes. Now value refers to how light or dark a subject is, and by painting in those dark values and shadows first, it's just going to make it much easier to then apply the light values and get the saturation of the colour correct. Now in the foreground of a landscape, you'll generally find your darkest darks and your lightest lights, but then as landforms recede, darks are not as dark and lights are not as light, and that's because the value scale narrows. 
So I've started off with these hill shadows and this is a mix of ultramarine blue with burnt sienna, some titanium white and a little bit of quinacridone crimson. And then what I've done here is I've used the same colours but with less titanium white to create a darker colour and I use that to mark in some of those shadows at the side of the river bank and it's a kind of like silty sand with stones along there. Next I'm going to mark in these shadows in the grasses in the foreground and those conifer trees that are on the hill. Now trees are generally some of the darkest values to be found in the landscape. Especially conifer trees as you get lots of dark occlusion shadows and the foliage is generally quite dark also. I'm keeping the shadow mix simple here with a mix of ultramarine blue and a little yellow oxide. I've also mixed in a little bit of titanium white for those tree shadows there just to make the value a little bit lighter. And then lastly I paint the cloud shadows which are actually quite light in value but I still include them with the shadows and again this is the same mix I used for the hill shadows and the shadows along the river bank in the foreground. It's the same colours but with a lot more titanium white to make the value lighter. I mark in the cloud highlights with a mix of titanium white and some burnt sienna and the burnt sienna is just going to give it a nice soft orange glow to it. Next I paint the sky and I keep this really simple with a mix of ultramarine blue and titanium white and I'm applying it with a number 5 flat brush. In general at the moment I'm using number 5 flat brushes and number 3 fill book brushes. So a bit larger anyway but this is so I can cover ground quickly and create a nice loose painterly style. As I work on that distant hill there's lots of exposed dirt and rocks on there but also some plants, trees and shrubs as well. Now green wavelengths of light don't tend to travel well over long distances and the colour falls away quite quickly. Also some of those shrubs and trees are of a lower chroma green anyway and chroma is another word for saturation. So the colours that I need to mix here need to be low in chroma. So what I've done here is I've taken my existing cloud highlight mix and then added some yellow oxide, some burnt sienna and some ultramarine blue. I'm keeping the value light and it kind of looks like a greenish kind of grey on my palette. But when next to those hill shadows which have a blue cast to them anyway, this mixture will look quite green. When it comes to painting the conifer trees that are in light on the hill, I'm using yellow oxide with ultramarine blue and some titanium white, but I'm using a lot more yellow oxide in my mix. Now for the fun part of this painting and that's blocking in those autumn colours in the willows and poplar trees that are in the midground. Now the thing to remember with yellows is they're generally light in value so this is something to keep in mind. This also means the tree shadows are generally going to be lighter in value as well. Now the thing to be careful of when you're painting autumn trees is to not let that colour run away with you. So we need to keep it in check. I'm starting off with the tree shadows and this is a mix of yellow oxide with ultramarine blue and some quinacridone crimson. And this is going to create a greenish brown colour but the yellow oxide is going to be the more dominant colour in the mix. Now once I've marked in those tree shadows I start painting in the areas of the trees crowns that are in the full sunlight. Now we want to create some nice rich autumn colours here but as I said just a moment ago we don't want those yellows to be too saturated that they just look garish or run away with us on the canvas. It's all going to be in harmony with the rest of the painting. So I'm starting off with yellow oxide which is a lower chroma yellow and of course you can use yellow ochre instead. I mean the two colours are very similar. Yellow oxide is a tiny bit punchier and it's also a bit cheaper as well so it's a cost thing as much as anything else for me. But anyway, yellow oxide, then I mix in some cadmium yellow which just increases the saturation and then I mix in some titanium white which will make the value lighter. I also mix in some quinacridone crimson and this is just going to help to keep that colour in check. You can create some nice golden tones by mixing in this colour with the existing yellows. 
When I create my autumn mix, I don't mix all the colors in thoroughly together. I create a few different colors to create texture within the tree canopies. Now keeping your colors harmonious is really important if you want your painting to read well. We want to tie all the zones in the painting together, so I'm trying to use where possible similar colors throughout the painting. I've used a lot of ultramarine blue in the sky, the hills, and I'm gonna be using it a lot in the foreground as well, also the tree shadows, and I've been using a lot of yellow oxide. Honestly, you don't need to use many colors, just keep it simple. Now I'm going to paint some of that pale straw coloured grass that's just in front of those trees and also add some green grass to it as well. So for the straw coloured grass I just took my tree shadow mix and then added a lot of titanium white to it and it just creates a pale straw colour. For the grass that's in the full sunlight I've mainly used a mix of yellow oxide with ultramarine blue cadmium yellow to increase the saturation and then some titanium white to make the value lighter. For the silty sand and stones that are along this river plain, I've mixed a warm grey. It's very light in value and low in chroma and this is titanium white with some burnt sienna, ultramarine blue and yellow oxide and I've used these colours in very small amount. Next I start painting the water in the stream in the foreground. It's quite shallow but there's a little bit of fast flowing water within it. So I'm going to be mixing a couple of different blues here. For the darker areas of the water I've mixed a combination of ultramarine blue with a little yellow oxide and titanium white. And I've marked these areas in with a number 5 flat brush. There's also some darker areas of the water in the foreground which are mostly reflecting the hill in the background with the conifer trees and the plants growing along the riverbank. So I've kind of created a muddy greenish colour but that still looks natural and this is a mix of ultramarine blue with a little yellow oxide and burnt sienna. For those lighter areas in the water that are reflecting the sky I've used the same colours that I used in the sky which was a mix of ultramarine blue and titanium white. I then spent some time just marking in some of these shadow areas within the water and the foreground. Now the foreground is mostly in shadow but there's some dappled light across there as well which is also going to add interest to the painting. So I'm using my warm greys and going over some of these shadows again with the shadow mix I made earlier. I then paint the areas of grass and other plants that are in shadow in the foreground with a mix of ultramarine blue, some yellow oxide and some titanium white. I also restate some of those dark occlusion shadows there as well. Again this is ultramarine blue with a very small amount of yellow oxide. I paint a couple of those boulders and the log in the foreground with a mix of ultramarine blue, yellow oxide, burnt sienna and some titanium white. Following that I then spend a bit of time working on the turbulent water that's in the very foreground. I'm using a number 2 flat brush here with a mix of ultramarine blue, yellow oxide, a little burnt sienna and a lot of titanium white. Now once I'd roughly marked in where all the major zones are in the painting, I then went back to restate the darks and tidy up some of those areas. Also to add a few more paint layers, especially to the trees as well that are in the midground. Now as I'm using Liquin Original as my medium here, I can use this to my advantage because it was already starting to dry even after just over an hour of painting this, so it meant I could work over some thicker layers of paint over the areas that I just painted earlier. I restate some of these dark shadows, especially in the background hill and those conifer tree shadows. And I'm using the same colors that I was using just a moment ago. I'm using a number two flat brush and I start adding some more layers to the tree canopies in the midground. And I'm using the same colors that I was using just a moment ago, but I've made some of the values lighter by mixing in some more titanium white. Now if I need to increase the saturation again I can always add a bit more yellow oxide and cadmium yellow. As I said before I'm not mixing these yellows in together thoroughly because I want some of those different colours to come through. 
Generally I'm adding lighter layers of paint to the tree canopies and this is just going to help to build up the three dimensional form within the trees. Back to the water and I'm still using a number two flat brush and I'm starting to create some movement within the water, adding a bit more detail, especially the areas of still water that's reflecting the sky. Now this takes a little bit of time, but I'm just looking for where those main shadows are within the water. I restate some of those and then add some more highlights on top. I also paint the suggestion of some more turbulent white water that's in the very foreground. Finally I mark in the suggestion of a network of stems and branches within those willow trees and I'm just using a number zero round brush. At this point of the painting, I allow it to dry. I'm happy with the way the blocking in stage has gone so far. And when it comes to adding some detail, I don't think I'm gonna to need to add too much. It's during the blocking in stage that I just wanna check that everything's working. So all my colors and values and the overall composition. We want to make sure the painting is going to read well. I've let the painting dry and what I'm doing here is I'm just going back over some of these areas that I painted earlier just to tidy them up. So adding another layer to the sky and clouds and then painting a few lighter layers of green to those conifer trees growing on the hill. And I'm using the same colors that I used in the blocking in stage, which was yellow oxide with ultramarine blue and a little bit of titanium white. Now following this, I'm gonna get straight into building up more detail in the willows and poplar trees that are in the midground. This is the main feature in this painting, those tasty autumn colors. Now just like before, I'm using the same colors, a mix of yellow oxide with some cadmium yellow, titanium white, and some chronacridone crimson. But this time I'm adding lighter layers to my previous layers, and this is just gonna to help to build up more three-dimensional form within those tree canopies. I found that a number three filbert brush is perfect for painting these trees, especially with its rounded edge. We can get a variety of marks with them. It's also good for painting the suggestion of clumps of leaves. Now really what I'm doing now in this painting is mostly adding highlights, because I'm saving my lightest values until the end of the painting. I'd actually got most of the work done in the blocking in stage. So this part of the painting only required one more sitting. I paint some more of that straw colored grass, which is quite pale. And that's a mix of ultramarine blue, yellow oxide, titanium white, and a little bit of quinacridone crimson. I add in some more of those darker accents and shadows within the plants growing at the bank of the stream here. And I paint the suggestion of a few stems, leaves, and twigs. I also add in some more of the grass that's in shadow. And this is mainly a mix of yellow oxide, ultramarine blue, and a little cobalt teal. I'm modeling the paint and building up some form and detail within the plants and the grass here, making it look wild and overgrown. One of the last things I did with this painting is I spent some time adding more detail to the water because I wanted to make it look like it was flowing. It's not particularly fast flowing water, but it's quite shallow. So this is something I wanted to communicate in the painting. Now the foundation and the groundwork is laid there, so it's really just a case of adding a few highlights and details in the foreground. I use a number two flat brush and a mix of titanium white with ultramarine blue to paint the suggestion of ripples along that faster flowing water, but also painting in some of those still areas of water as well. I then create a mix of ultramarine blue with some burnt sienna and a little titanium white, and with a number zero round brush, just paint a few stones in the foreground. Once I'd spent time working on the stream, the last thing to do was to add a few highlights to that faster flowing water in the foreground. And this is just titanium white with a little bit of burnt sienna mixed in. This white water is also gonna make the stream look like there's some full sunlight shining on it. The last thing I do to complete this painting is just add a few highlights to the tree canopies Again, using the same colors that I was using a moment ago, but with more titanium white in the mix. 
and I'm going sparingly with the highlights here, just painting a few, and this is just going to finally define the shapes of these tree canopies. It was here that I decided the painting was complete. I have to say I really enjoyed painting this one, and I'm strongly considering maybe doing a larger painting of this, but I think I'm going to paint a few more autumn scenes first and then perhaps choose a couple of the best ones. We'll see. I'll post it on YouTube. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Also please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Now if you'd like to learn more about painting then check out the painting resources I have on my website at samulerp.com. I've got loads of free written painting tutorials that you can copy and follow along with and use the reference photos as well. And I also have full length painting tutorial videos on there for sale as well. Now you can get instant access to all of my full length painting tutorial videos by subscribing to me on Patreon for just $5 a month, where every month you get a new full length painting tutorial video. So I go into lots of different areas of painting landscapes and seascapes, and with each video I show you the full painting process. I'll show you how to mix all the colours on my palette and I'll give you loads of tips on composition, colour, tone and values and how to make your painting read well. Now what I'm doing with Patreon is I want to turn it into a huge painting resource for anybody that wants to learn how to paint landscapes or improve their painting skills. So check it out at patreon.com forward slash Samuel under slash herb under slash artist and I've put the link in the description box below. If you'd like to see what artworks I'm working on, then you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook and also my other website, samuelapfineart.com, which is just to showcase my paintings. So you can see some of my latest works there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a beautiful day and I shall see you in the next video.